You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm joined here with none other than Tuckatuck, three of the members of the Seven Piece group. I'm joined by Luke, Isa, and Zan. And I'm very lucky because they're two guitarists and a bassist, and I'm a guitarist, so we're totally going to geek out over that in a second. And if you guys haven't checked them out yet, go look them up online. Tuckatuck, they put out a couple of new songs on their band camp. They got a couple of playthroughs. They're really cool to watch, so definitely check them out. Guys, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Thank, Thank you, you for having, having me. Yeah. My name is Zan Pirzada, and I play guitar in the band Taka Tuck. Uh, my name is Luke, Luke Azariah, and I play guitar and I do synths in Taka Tuck. And I'm the basis of Taka Tuck. I am Isa Najam. Awesome. So you guys, uh, there's not a whole lot of information I could really dig up about this band. I was trying to do as much research as I can. The things that I've figured out so far is that you uh, originated from Lahore in Pakistan about 10 years ago. Uh, there's uh, been a couple of lineup changes. You guys really like something called Paraka Rolls or Parantha Rolls. <laughs> and you also like Halo. <laughs> and that's pretty much all I've been able to figure out. So please, that put these three of you. Awesome. Could, that's could you so please? Best I need to know the origin. <laughs> I love how this information has found itself to you. <laughs> I, 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 I am really impressed by how dig, how deep you've dug to actually find find, find the Paraka yeah, I'm, Rolls. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not quite Nardwar on not like Nardwar kind of level, but I try. <laughs> yeah. uh, paratha Rolls are actually like a snack, if you will. It's like uh, this deep fried bread if you may and with kebabs and whatnot and halo is you know halo yeah it's got some barbecue chicken and, and, in there and it's like a roll of a uh, deep fried bread i think what's also so, sorry to cut you i think what's also pertinent to this conversation right now is that uh, taka tuck the word taka tuck uh, refers to a dish yes, um, yes that is made out of goat uh, balls and uh, <laughs> intestine, not not intestines, but like kidney, heart, and testicles. Uh, oh, yeah. Just, did just, not just, know yeah, you should know yeah. that right from and the, the get people who make it use a huge pan and they use these spatulas and they uh, actually cut those pieces up, making a beef that sounds like taka tak taka tak taka tak taka tak taka tak taka tak. That's why the dish it's like an onomatopoeia of, yeah. of the of That's the sound. Just like gent. Yeah. It's, it's, it gents, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's like kind of like that a, a, a sugar thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those guys are playing bleed all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sending you a video so you know what what's up. Okay. <laughs> for, for for later. <laughs> but I need to know the origin story. So how how did you guys get together and start playing music, basically? Um, me, I mean, myself, the drummers, Yusuf and Daud and Misbah, uh, we, Misbah, our ex-guitar player, uh, we met 10 years ago in school, basically, and that's how we formed. We were initially a three-piece with one drummer one and two guitar players, and I would just, like, we would swap bass duties or whatever, and then we found uh, a vocalist, Shazor Bhatti, um, I'm, did you hear the songs uh, Depraved or Walls They Collapse or Breakdown? Like super old stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've with, heard some with, like that, those yeah. su super growly vocals. We did that lineup mm -hmm. for like about three songs. Isa joined um, right in the second before, song, I think. Yeah, yeah, in the second song, uh, Walls They Collapse. In about what what year was it, Isa? Was it like twenty? 10, 2011? 2010, end of 2010. Yeah, you basically joined in the first year of the band forming, I think. That was pretty fast. Like, you were, you have been there mostly from the beginning, right? Yeah, I've been there with you guys for a long time. <laughs> long time. Uh, but yeah, and uh, I think I, we just had a couple of lineup changes over the years. Uh, after those three songs, our vocalist left the band. And our original guitar player, Misbah, he also left the band. And that's when uh, we got Ibrahim Imdad. He's now gone on to form a solo indie project by the name of Gentle Robot. You really need to check that out. It's like yeah, some amazing great. indie prog, yeah, just amazing. goodness. He's like a genius. So he did Out of Something with us. And he left right after that because he, he couldn't really give time 
like to being in a full time band and uh, that's when we took a bit of a break didn't we yeah so, yeah that's when we were i mean we were playing shows on and off or whatever we hadn't like taken a hiatus like that or whatever but we yeah. weren't really um making new doing songs. any new music yeah. yeah i think ibrahim was still uh playing live shows with you guys even though he wasn't in the band yeah time. even though he left the band he did like a couple of shows with us yeah so this is around band. like 2017 2016 2017 right like when he had sort of left the band and he was doing his gentle robot stuff, but he'd do the odd show with us here or there, like once or twice a year. Not like we play a lot of shows in Pakistan, like being <laughs> there a metal band. Many shows happening in Pakistan, anyways. So if any opportunity turned up, these guys would these guys would like just go grab mm-hmm. that opportunity. And Luke wasn't in the band at that point. When I mean, like, uh, what what really I think changed the whole thing and got us really serious about writing an album was when we got the headlines headlining slot at basically the only uh, festival that promotes independent uh, music and like doesn't really focus on the commercial music but like focuses on all these alternative acts and we were headlining that festival so that was like a bit of a push like hey man we have something here we, we maybe we need to you know write some new songs and that's when Luke came into the picture uh, Luke uh, had always been a very close friend and he had been in another band that we were playing with called Kiri Makore. So he was already like a bandmate, uh, you know, in, in so many ways. And he had played bass for Taka Taka whenever Isa, you know, was when he was away for college. Um, so he was already in the family. And that's in 2018, we sort of recruited Luke into the band. And soon after, we got the two vocalists as well. And we started writing an album. 2018 uh, January is when we started. Um, yeah. April 2019 is when we wrapped it. <laughs> yeah, basically ended writing it and went and recorded it. And it took us about another six to eight months. And we put out the first song, Fault Lines, in, in February of this year, 2020. Am I right, guys? I actually yeah. don't remember yeah. when did Fall Yeah, I think it was February, like was give or take January, February, early this year is when we mm-hmm. put that record. We started putting songs from that record out. Yeah. So that is us in a nutshell, man. Like basically, that's what we've been doing these past ten years. Just I guess <laughs> honing our craft and just trying to get better. So so uh, and this has been around since twenty ten, like you just said, and up till yes. now. And you, doing the shows and just kind of being a part of the whole scene, have you really seen things change over the ten, last 10 years around for just what it's like for bands? Man, for so I, I think it's important to also give you a bit of a political uh, snapshot of what's of been going on in the past 10, 15 years over there, over here, well, sorry. Um, basically, you know, I live in a little American bubble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, I mean, like, uh, the music has all music and arts always sort of takes a back seat. It 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 really saw a resurgence in the early two thousands, and you know, there, there was a whole scene scene building, and then around 26, 2006 or two thousand and seven, the whole um, war against terror really caught up with us, and you know, uh, a lot of um, art activity was cut down and that's the scene really took a hit in that sense um, but around the time that we you know got together 2010 2011 that's that's uh, that uh, instability was sort of uh, dying out and stuff was going back to normal the only thing in Pakistan though is that people just love corporate uh, pop music you get it so there's no real space for a metal band, let alone any band that's doing something weird or crazy. You know, it doesn't have yeah, to be metal. Not, not, not even necessarily Pakistani pop music. I mean, the biggest thing that's listened to in Pakistan is Bollywood music from India. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the Pakistani pop industry doesn't even have that much of a stronghold either. Right, 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 right. Very different. Yeah. And it- a lot to consider with the for the you know the atmosphere of it yes uh, yeah, because you, you have to sorry sorry Luke, you were saying no, no, no. i was just gonna say that even back then uh 
the only like rock and metal scene was these small gigs of a very close community of people who would like i think it was like what like 200 people at the most 2 300 people who were like die not, not, not even not even not even yeah <laughs> like i, mean, I remember like, like, seeing the, the same people at gigs like yeah, we, at least in my life i would, like, I would <laughs> recognize every person dude exactly. like, every I single mean, person i would know them you know by the fifth <laughs> show <laughs> <laughs> and, and i think one other thing to consider about pakistani music is and the industry over here is that pop music and even rock music uh, in pakistan whenever it was popular and to 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 this day actually it's always been bands and acts and artists who've been sponsored by big con- like companies such as pepsi or coke or nescafe and all of these companies who sort of take on these artists uh, on as ambassadors and have them create content or music for them So in Pakistan like stuff like Nescafe Basement, Coke Studio, Pepsi Battle of the Bands, these are the things that sort of rule the scene and if you're not really um uh, partaking in that sort of stuff, I mean we have as individuals like on a session player level we we do all sorts of work right we sort of have to to survive but to make a band run you have to sort of comply with these um uh, norms or you know modes of getting putting putting yourself out there and obviously then these companies have yeah. to what like yeah they really decide what the product is going to yeah, be and in the and then the platforms that zan has named are like the only three platforms that are promoting music or churning out artists like yeah. only the artists who go through these sort of yeah, they, um, they have some yeah, they have some you know they can tour the country they get like decent paying shows they have fans or whatever it's basically you know what's been dictated by the corporates and people are so used to it because this goes back to the 80s you know some of the biggest pop stars this our country has seen like vital signs and junoon but like both bands are were pepsi bands you know they pushed these bands so hard uh, that uh, you know that they became like these global superstars um and still are in this country so i think th- this is a big thing to consider when you're like considering the scene in pakistan yeah especially when you're playing a genre that's not that palatable to the bands exactly mm-hmm. yeah So for the people that do latch on to it it must be just like wow. Yeah. Finally there's there's a band that I want that that's out there and doing it, right? Yeah, they love it. They like like I think they're like some hardcore kind of people. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> yeah. for sure man. Like they'll buy the merch, they'll come to the shows and everything. But again, that's like a uh, not uh, a big uh, enough number of people yeah. that we can sustain ourselves right but like yeah. and it's not even that there are other metal bands around that we can sort of create a community or a scene right it's like at this point we're like probably the only functioning metal band in the country right there are a couple of people who are doing some cool projects or whatever but they're not really bands out there to you know do the band thing they like putting out a song every 5 years is I don't see that as running a band you, you know or trying to make it as a band so and, and and we are actually like really grateful of the response we get from the people and uh, I mean it sometimes just makes me like awestruck and amazed like how much people actually like care about us and give us a lot of positive feedback but it's just that those people are just so small in number that yeah I don't know yeah you get you get what i'm saying for sure but it's the passion for the music that must have brought you guys together in the beginning like what were some of the kind of common influences that you see kind of always stick with the band that like is it you know not just the love for the music but also other things as well um i i think we're really lucky and i i feel like maybe not a lot of bands uh, have that even around us the bands that i see that are functioning like i i i i personally feel that we're like really lucky that all of us are really good friends and we're all really into the same style of music and we all like have the same um you know sort of 
quality level that we want to achieve as musicians or as a band so i think that's what drives yeah. us it's it's actually quite a blessing that uh, all of us have been friends since we were like little kids we yeah like a long time and um, it's just that we all grew up together sharing music with each other and like inspiring each other to actually become better artists better musicians and yeah that and we all together have been also a huge inspiration for each other yeah for sure music. man and i think for me personally to a certain extent like i mean uh, i wouldn't say i'm like a prominent figure in the session playing scene or the musician scene but like the band members in the group are also employed in a lot of different uh, you know musical contexts or you know setups or whatever and everyone in the industry sort of knows that okay th- there's this you know band that is just goes ape shit crazy and ev- like no one else is doing what we do so it 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 feels kind of good to do something that just sh- sort of make makes people's jaws like drop so <laughs> i think that's also what sort of drives us like you know every time we put something out people think oh my god you know at least in pakistan i'm just talking about like yeah, pakistani yeah. audiences they're like oh holy shit you know this is like the heaviest thing we've ever heard or whatever it's like shit dude you don't know <laughs> nothing about heavy stuff yeah. you get what i mean right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's it's fun how how far can you like push it like, to freak people out over here at least <laughs> definitely I, I kind of want to get a little bit into the the music writing process and like what's it like for you guys to like share ideas together and kind of put a song together and also uh, I mean we don't have uh, any vocalists with us today but maybe right. some of you guys are involved a little bit in the lyrics too and all that for sure uh, Luke you want to take this one yeah so um, I'll the only thing I can talk about is from the time onwards since I joined. So I think before that we all were like a group of friends who used to jam together. And so uh, our drummer Yusuf our drummers sorry Yusuf and Daud we go to their house we just lock ourselves up in their basement and we just jam for fun. And that's mostly how I if tell me if I'm wrong that's how the out of something EP came to correct no no that's totally how it came about. Yeah so that whole like before aquaface everything was like a jamming setup and we just jam around and perfect the songs but this time because uh, we all had jobs and uh, what yusuf married married back then? yusuf yusuf was married i was about to get married you were married. also on your way to getting married <laughs> no i wasn't <laughs> but yeah now i'm married but so uh, we all had these responsibilities and these things to do and so what we did this time was that we would write demos on our own laptops in our homes uh and then we would figure out like uh set a time like once a week we would all meet and we would like play those demos out and we uh come up with ideas on how to improve that thing and Sam yeah. would contribute to some of my demos I would contribute to Yeah basically demos. any song that came out uh, in the last record was was either a Luke uh, project file or a Sam project file and then we would just yeah. sort of Frankenstein them add their own little uh, input to that and just make it a whole whole something and then when we were done with the music part of it Ali our vocalist one of our vocalists was in Karachi back then which is a city about like a 2 hour flight from Lahore so we send send the demo to him and he send he write vocal ideas and lyrics on those demos. he's a great engineer so like he yeah. he made really nice demos and uh, then he send them back to us and then we'd work here with the other vocalist Altamash and that's how we just came up with these frankensteins of ideas that we consolidated into songs we honestly didn't know how to play any of the songs together as a band yeah, until after you know we had put out fault lines and we got this you know festival gig in islamabad like in the capital of pakistan <laughs> like a few yeah. months ago and that's when we were like oh okay uh, you know time to learn these songs yeah, and i think right. that's the case with most 
pr- modern progressive metal bands, you know, in today, because you write all these crazy parts and you don't know how to play them as a band. You know? <laughs> Other than the drummer, it was a new thing for me, like personally, because we used to just jam out the songs and, like, what we used to do before was just play the songs like twenty four seven. Like we could just wake up four a.m. Yeah. in the morning and play a show. Like we were yeah, that, we that ready. ready. Yeah. With the songs. This time around was different because we had to learn, I had, I had to learn the songs after we had tracked uh, at Aleph in Karachi. It was like so it was a different process. Song. It's like learning how to play a cover. <laughs> but it's like that. Yeah. Thing. We had to open up the project files and like give everyone their stem, you know, you know, go and listen to this at home and figure this shit out. Because <laughs> like a lot of the recording process was oh, I know th- I play this part of, the, you know, the first half of this really well and the, and Luke plays, you know, the next half really well. Uh, so, you know, maybe he can track it, you know. Oh, Ali is really good at, you know, finger picking. Maybe the vocalist should track this guitar part. Mm-hmm. So we've done a lot of that uh, in this record. So it was a lot of, you know, learning for everyone. Um, yeah, Definitely. that's how we did it, basically. Cool. And uh, how about with like the lyrical content? Was that, that all just kind of... That's all, I would say, 90% Ali. Ali, that's all Ali, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ali, Ali did most of the lyrics. And uh, I think uh, some of uh, Altamash's parts were done by me and some of them were done by himself, uh, Altamash himself. But uh, yeah, it was mostly Ali. So he did the lyrics. One of the things I take take away from it when I listen to your guys' music, I mean, I'm obviously right away with the name Tuck a Tuck and like the things that you've written in your biographies and stuff on Facebook, like you guys are hilarious. Like there's so much tongue in cheek humor. You guys like in your music videos too, you're playing like little pranks on each other in the videos. You can tell that you're, <laughs> you're having fun, you're enjoying it, but you haven't in any way sacrificed the art. Like you actually make deep meaningful music that has emotion in it and actually has a meaning to it so what i see is a band that takes the art seriously but doesn't take itself seriously and i think that's the perfect combination i'm, thank, I'm glad you feel that way about us man. yeah thanks man <laughs> thank, thank you so much, much. <laughs> i mean if we were it's like a uh, catatonia or like some like really serious dark uh, we're not dark no, bros we're not, you know we're just we're <laughs> Well, I think it gets to be a little bit too much after a while, and it's kind of like, oh, come on, like, smile, you know, like, yeah. sure, like <laughs> actually enjoy it. <laughs> Life's good, man. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Life's That's why I think some metalheads now are just so unapologetically, like, flocking towards bands like Ghost, you know, because it's right. fun. And, like, why not? Like, yeah. we're allowed to have fun, aren't we? And I don't know where maybe it started with black metal where we were all like, you know, fuck fun. (laughs) (laughs) In all honesty, like, I mean, we're just a bunch. I think I can say this here because it's not a Pakistani show. We're just a bunch of stoners, dude. Like, I mean, like the word (laughs) acrophase, we can tell you what it means. Like acrophase is a term that we would use, right? Like right before we'd start jamming or playing or whatever, we'd be like, you know, let's smoke a J. And if you smoke the J, that means we've attained our acrophase and we're ready you know, to jam or whatever. And that, when, we were, when it came to, like, you know, naming the record, that was the one thing that resonated so hard with everyone. So Everything else was so... Was in the acrophase. You know, we were fucking stoned. So, uh, <laughs> it was like, you know, this this makes sense. Yes, acrophase, this is this is what it is. And, like, this is, this is our own meaning for it you know so deep and something so like whoa what's acrophase but yeah we just high as fuck yeah we just <laughs> high as fuck it doesn't happen <laughs> like everything else sounded really pseudo and just try hard so this just felt natural and this is this was as true as it could get <laughs> you know well that's what it seems it's like you guys aren't is there's no gimmick here you're you're being honest you're making something that you like but it's you're being yourselves yeah, that's He's trying to be. Looking forward for the band right now. Are you guys got some songs in the bag that you're still working on? Some projects? No. So yeah. how the record is going is like we've put out five singles from the record, 
there are eight songs on the actual full length, uh, two of which are like electronic pieces. So we're not doing like music videos for them and not doing them as singles, but we, we, we have one song left from this album cycle that's going to tie the whole thing together. And the day that that song comes out is, the, I think it's a date in September. Uh, we haven't yeah. really decided on the specific date, but it's going to be in September. Yeah. That's when the whole album will be out and the last music video will be out as well. Um, but we are knee deep in writing the next one because we, we, we got done writing this last uh, April, right? So we've this year started, you know, we felt like we were in a place where we could go now. Yeah, it's been almost a year since we actually wrote something new. And like, honestly, Zan, I don't know about you, but I was getting bored of not like making new stuff and writing. Yeah. Shit. And I, I was just, just started off writing some cool riffs and I sent them to Zan. And I, I think the process for the next album has already started that way. I think uh, I also really, it, we both had been itching to write for a while, but I think putting the whole, like we were setting up our Patreon, we were figuring out merch, we were figuring out our release stuff, yeah, we were figuring out videos, content. So we had got, yeah, for a long time, the band had become like a lot of work, you know, so we couldn't really focus on, you know, new songs or dialing in new patches or whatever, you know, it was more about four hour phone calls with the merch guy figuring out what fabric we're using. So I think now we're sort of getting done with all of that stuff and it's all figured out and we're almost done with the cycle. So we're gearing up for the next, I think we're like four or five songs in. Uh, if we count the ones that Ali has done vocal for, that's what I'm, like that's eight. what I'm counting. Yeah. Oh. oh, he's done four of mine and he's done like four or five of yours. So we have, like, I think other than those, I have, like, about 15 songs lying around. So yeah, we have, here, like, and then you have, we have, like, a total of, like, more than 50, 60 demos to yeah, find the best figure out. and just make the next Because in all honesty, the last, like, acro phase, making acro phase was, a, was a, a bit of a casual, it was a bit more casual than it is now because now we've actually received, like, really good feedback. Our merch is almost sold out. We have a Patreon that people are actually subscribing to. So it, it feels like, holy shit, you know, we owe everyone like a really good record. We know we can do better. <laughs> you know, you pressure, know. Add on to what Zan has just said. Uh, I think we have actually figured out the process of how we as a band function the best. Because during Aquifice, we yeah. were, it was a long learning curve for us how to get yeah. the process down and now that we have figured most of it out i think the next album would be a bit more smoother for us and it would be hopefully much better better, better than this one hopefully i i'm so excited to hear it you guys like wow uh, and i can't wait to hear the when you finally put out the, the full album to hear the rest of the songs that i haven't heard yet is just exciting to know that things are really starting to happen for you guys because this is such good music you guys are making. <laughs> like it's so Thank awesome. You so like, much. Have you have you listened to it? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> Don't know what to say right now. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I could just send you the record right now, by the yeah, way. Like <laughs> you don't mind. I, I'm dropping the link right now down here. You should just have it. it in one go. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's Christmas. Because it's, all the songs are connected, like Keshav actually went through the effort of making uh, the songs transition into each other in a very cool way. So that's also another thing. Are you familiar with Keshav and his work? No. He's in a band called uh, Sky Harbor. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I and I, I mean, he's, he's, he's actually the reason uh, behind a lot of the motivation that we had. And uh, he was like the first legit person you know before that it was all, always you know friends and people on the internet shore well he was like the first legit person from the scene that we followed from a band that we looked up to and you know idolized like he you know gave his 
stamp of approval and he wanted to work with us and he actually even featured on a song and like all that he's done for us that was just like holy yeah. shit and if he, this guy yeah takes what we're doing let's go you know yeah. <laughs> yeah his faith in us was like one of the biggest driving forces that actually made the yeah man 110% what would you guys say to anyone who's trying to chase their dream? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I would just say, like, uh, you have to be serious about it. And, like, how we used to take the band before, before, like, when we came up with Out of Something, I remember there wasn't this much work that we put in. We just made uh, an artwork. Zan's dad, he had a painting. We used that artwork. We just got the record out. But this time around, there's been a lot of effort from everyone. Like, we were serious about getting a good artwork. We were serious about making good uh, quality music videos and just up the game, you know, and take it more seriously for us, you know. Let's just kind of put it out there. I think I would just say that having, like, a... You can't, you, you should always have something that you can obviously fall back on, but like you, you can't have like a solid plan B, you know, if this doesn't work, you know, I'm just going to go work construction or some shit or whatever. Uh, it has to be, um, it has to be something that A, you really, really dig. And if you really, really dig it, you're probably just going to go full throttle, you know, either way. Um, yeah, so just keep at it because like, I mean, for me, the turning point was when we got in touch with Keshav and he really, you know, dug it. And it took us, what, eight, nine years to get to that point of just being persistent and, you know, just staying at it without much reward or anything. You get it? So I feel like it just takes time. And if you're patient and if you work hard and if you're honest with that work, um, things will happen. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, disconnected for a while. I, I couldn't hear what Isa said, but I know Zan probably talked about persistence. So, uh, <laughs> and being consistent with making amazing content. But uh, what I actually felt is that there, for people who are starting out, for people who are chasing a dream, I think that there will be a ton, a ton of moments that will discourage you will make you feel like you should give up and um, just make you sad and make you maybe not want to do this anymore. But it's just those few moments of like a rewarding feeling you get when you read a comment on Facebook or a comment on like YouTube on one of your videos that like really makes you feel like this is what I live for and this is what I, why, why I do all of this. And that's the kind of motivation you get when you actually achieve one of your goals and I think that's what you live for as a musician and as an artist and you have to just disregard all the negativity that surrounds you that you feel from inside if you feel any anxiety I think for personally for me those things are what drive me to be better to be a better musician to actually improve myself and my art so yeah for sure and I think I would like to add that we are, this is where we're at actually as a band. We're still like chasing our dreams. We haven't, you know, um, gotten there. We, you know, we want to tour um, the States. We want to tour Canada. We want to tour Europe. Europe. I think yeah, dude. once we start doing that, I think, you know, then we can say, holy shit, you know, we've we've made some headway. Yeah, and that, it's um, that, that corny uh, saying that you shoot for the... Uh, moon even if you miss you land among the stars i think you have to keep your dreams really really big you have to aim to be like the next metallica and then you'll end up being like a decent band yeah you can't and i think dream of yeah. being something mediocre and you, you won't be able to achieve that just keep your dreams really massive that's going to drive you to actually be somewhat good enough for sure man i think on paper we shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't be, uh, we shouldn't exist because metal band from Pakistan, you know, uh, that's a bit, uh, you know, on paper that sounds like, yeah, that's something that can't exist, you know, for people that aren't from here. 
So, I mean, if we can make it work, I think anyone can sort of make it work anywhere. Is there is there anything else that you guys would like to let our listeners know? Um, I think they should just check the band out. If, and if they dig it, they should. And if they want to support, they should uh, buy the record or buy some merch or subscribe to our Patreon, guys. Yeah, um, our merch is on our website. You can check the album out on Bandcamp. Please subscribe. Please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We need those sub- subs, man. We need those subs, we need man. Those subs. <laughs> Hit that bell icon, bro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Patreon is something we just started out. We have a handful of people who are supporting yeah. us uh, in ways we didn't even imagine. And it would be great to have more people helping us create the next record and be the best that we can. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking to Luke, Isa, and Zan from the band Tucka Tuck. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, you guys. I really strongly urge anyone listening to this to go listen to this band because they're going to blow your mind into a bunch of small chunks and then they're going to roll them up into a Parantha roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> please check them out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please Sweet. check out Tucka Tuck thank you so much for taking time to talk to me you guys and take care of yourselves thank you okay? Derek take thank care you so much for having us thank you for having us man